Hello everybody and welcome to Nids' Woodshop. Today I'm going to show you how I made this piano bar behind me. But first let me say that it was not without its headaches. When I first decided to pursue this project, I was going to use a mix of wood and epoxy. Only problem being, I knew next to nothing about epoxy. But I wasn't about to let that little detail stop me. Oh yeah. I just went after oh, it. Yeah. I poured, the epoxy burned, ruining the entire project. And then I tried to fix it by removing the top layer and, yes, pouring more epoxy over it to hide my shame. After over a thousand dollars and many hours of work later, I had to scrap the entire thing. What an idiot! And that failure sat on the floor of my shop for the next two years along with my pride before I decided to give it another go. After that little mishap, I revamped my approach and started to make some actual good decisions. Stick around to see the process. Like the start of any project, we begin with milling. I like to buy rough sawn lumber and mill it to size. With a large piece, I typically will have to flatten it with this router jig. Then over to the joiner to flatten out the edges for glue up. There are always some imperfections with the live edge wood, and I like to fill these bad boys with epoxy. But first, you've got to clean them up with a chisel and a wire wheel. I try not to tempt my epoxy, opting for the clean look of clear epoxy. Any chance I get, I avoid child labor laws and enlist the help of this little guy. For these epoxyed edges, I like to use Gorilla Tape backed with some wood clamped to the edge for reinforcement. Before sanding, I like to scribble over the wood with a pencil to be sure that I don't miss any spots. And for the initial sanding, I sand with 80 grit. Now, I decided to add a drink rail because I like to make my life difficult. I used a surfacing router bit, taking multiple passes to get to my desired depth. Before finish sanding, I throw a quick edge on the, well, edge. With a solid, unlaminated piece of wood, the odds that the wood will warp over time are actually increased. You can ensure against this by adding in these C channels. And if you're a woodworker on YouTube, putting C channel into things is almost required. I chose to join the mitered 90 degree edges of the bar top with a Festool domino. Then I hauled the separate pieces of the bar top into the house. Okay, so now I've got the bar top in place. Um, the next thing I'm gonna have to do is glue up this miter joint, which is pretty difficult to do because it's across a 90 degree angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue on some clamping calls across these corners so we can actually put clamping pressure across this joint uh, and then I got my dominoes here. I'm going to pop into place and just do a quick test run uh, to make sure this all works out just well before I start applying some glue. I use super glue to fix the clamping calls to the epoxy section and wood glue for the wood to wood contacts. It's worth noting that I did put finish on the underside of the bar before the glue up. And a little pro tip, get a friend to help you with a difficult glue up. 
And when the glue is dry, you simply chisel off the calls and sand. Now, I wasn't too happy with the appearance of this edge after glue up. I likely damaged the edges carrying the two pieces in, leading to this result. When I make a mistake like this, rather than trying to hide it, I prefer to accentuate it and come up with a creative solution. In this case, routing out the defect and filling it with a channel of epoxy. and I think it turned out pretty good. This old sign was created by my woodworking grandpa who immigrated from Scotland. This sign hung below my grandparents' mailbox for decades. So I thought it would be cool to incorporate some of these elements into my bar. Now I can tell you what this saying means, but then you won't get to experience the joy of the Google machine. Carving this out was as simple as printing the text in my chosen font, tracing it out with a knife, and then using my Dremel tool with a burr to carve out the letters. onto the lion which serves as my family crest. I traced the lion onto a piece of walnut and then did some YouTubing to figure out how to use a scroll saw. Then I just went for it. I know this process isn't horribly exciting, but it took me a while to complete, so you people are gonna sit here and watch it a while longer. Next, I traced the outline onto the bar top. I purchased this bit from Bits and Bits, which is roughly the size of a pin. I chucked it into my Dremel tool with a router base attachment and cut the outline of the lion. Now, of course, all of this would be easier with a CNC or something like a Shaper Origin, which I don't have. So, I'll have to deal with the human error that comes along with this process, meaning that this will not be perfect. But, I'm okay with that. Once the outline is cut, I hollow out the rest with a router and various chisels. I used epoxy and some clamping pressure to secure the inlay in place. And for all the error here, I think it turned out okay. Now for some finish sanding. I sand through the grits you see here and then I apply some Rubio Monocoat because what else do YouTube woodworkers use? Now about that piano. 
So when I inherited the piano that I eventually tore apart for this project, I completely blanked on videoing the process of tearing the piano apart. Luckily, I do have a friend that has an upright piano that has allowed me to come into their home to take a quick tour. Let's check it out. And when you open up this lid, you will see the piano harp, which is actually called the plate. And that's right here. And you will notice that on the back of this section is a large piece of wood, which this plate is bolted to. And this section is about five to six inches thick. Now to separate the piano harp from the rest of the piano, all you really need to do is take a chainsaw, make sure you stay in front of the piano harp and just cut a big slot right down the side and cut this thing in half. Now, after you've separated this in half, it is important to note that this five to six inch section of wood here is gonna remain adhered to the back of the harp. Now, obviously you don't want your piano harp to sit that proud of the wall. Otherwise it's gonna be sticking out that far. So you wanna debulk some of this and you wanna remove some of this wood, which is a huge pain in the butt. And additionally, when you're doing so, you do have to remove these bolts here because they protrude roughly two to three inches into this wood. And if you're gonna take a chainsaw and remove and debulk some of this wood, uh, you don't wanna hit these bolts. And it is important that this wood stays adhered to the piano harp if you wanna keep your strings intact because all these little pegs which the strings are attached to are also embedded into this wood. So it's important that this wood remains on the back of the harp. Now, once you have cut your slot down the side of your piano, and you separated them, it will look something like this. There was more wood adhered to the piano harp, which I removed off camera. I spent a considerable amount of time removing the excess wood from the back of the harp using a belt sander and an electric hand plane. Before mounting the piano harp, I had to create a wood panel wall as the backdrop. I chose walnut. I cut the boards to size and added a lip so the pieces would fit together when mounted. Then it was just a matter of making sure each piece was level as they were being installed. And back to the child labor. Earmuffs. Once installed, it was time to apply finish to the wall. I chose Osmo as it doesn't have to be pre-mixed and is easy to apply and gives me the look I was going for. I used the buffing pad attached to my sander to do all the dirty work. I opted for a French cleat to mount the piano harp. This consists of cutting two matching 45 degree edges and just letting gravity do its thing. I cut the matching edge into that wood that remained on the back of the piano harp. Simply lag bolt this bad boy in place and you're set to go. Next, 
Enlist the help of an unlucky friend to help you move this thing. It weighs about 200 pounds. I did not like it. Shimmy the harp into position. And then lift it onto its matching French cleat. And then you get to make that face of satisfaction that people make after they do something difficult. Boom. Easy peasy. Last but not least was adding some shelving. I used walnut for this as well. I simply bolted some uprights to the wall and cut out matching notches in the uprights and the shelves. Pop them together and you're done. Now for the big reveal. As per the usual agreement, let's run through the cost breakdown for this project. Spalta maple cost me $700. Epoxy was $80. The walnut for the panel wall was $600. The walnut wood that I used for the shelves was $120. Total for the finish was roughly $60. And the piano was free. If you have an interest in making a project like this, hop on Facebook Marketplace or something similar like Craigslist. People are giving away pianos for free, as long as you are willing to come and take it out of their house. Now, if you've been following along, that's a total cost of $1,560. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't include the cost for screws, glue, tools, sandpaper, router bits, etc. Etc. So, keep that in mind. If you think I've earned it, hit that like and subscribe button. And feel free to stick around to enjoy some of my other videos. Thanks for watching.